Hi students, this video is going to go through the factoring stuff. Uh, that's uh, somewhere between review and new stuff for you. On the first page, we're just factoring uh, by trying to find the, the greatest common factor we can remove from things. And if I take a look at my first one, we've got a 6x and a plus 9. I know that both of these are divisible by 3, and there's nothing really bigger I can take out, so I'm going to put that out front. And I'm going to divide each piece by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2. I still have an x there. And 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. At this point, that problem is done. For the next one, uh, looking at all three pieces at once, and in all three of these, I can, again, divide by 3. So I'm going to take a 3 out front. If I take a 3 out of 3x squared, I'm left with x squared. If I divide 21x by 3, I'm left with 7x. And if I divide 30 by 3, I'm left with 10. That's a minus from that sign. We can also do the same thing with a variable. Uh, I'm going to rewrite the first one to show us a handy way to look at this, which is 3 times x times x. And they've got a 5x here. We've got an x in common in both of these, so I'm going to write that out front. And the stuff that's left over, my 3x and my 5, and that's again minus, we leave on the inside. I'm going to do the same thing for the one below, where we've got 3 times p four times, so p times p times p times p. This would be p times p times p, and the last would be p times p. Um, I do not have anything I can take out in terms of the numbers, so let's see, I can identify one p in common. So I'm going to put that out front, and a second p in common. So I'm going to take, oh, but p times p is p squared, so I can put that out front, okay. And then the stuff that's left over, I've got 3, and then 2 p's is p squared. We've got 15, and then p, and then minus 20. And the last set of these, we're looking both at numbers and letters. Uh, a lot of students find it easier to do the letter part first. We've got an n times n and an n. I can take one of those out. n squared divided by n would leave me with an n. I'm leaving some space there, and I wouldn't have an n left in the last part. Then I might look at the numbers. I can see 8 and 10. The biggest thing I can divide both of those by is 2. So I'm going to put a 2 out front, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Leave me with 2n times 4n plus 5. For the last one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at my letters first, t, 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 and t, t. So I can take two of those out, that's going to be a t squared, because that's t times t. Uh, I'm left with a t for the first part and nothing for the second part. All right, then we'll look at the number parts. I've got 12 and 30. Now, I know both of these can be divided by 2, but I can go bigger this time. Uh, both 12 and 30, I can divide by 6. So I'm going to put that out front, and we're going to do 6 times 2 gets us to 12, 6 times 5 gets us to 30. At this point, these are fully factored. So the first thing that we can do with this uh, process is to use this to solve equations. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the idea that when we're graphing these things, if we had something in factored form like x plus 2 and x minus 3, we know that this is going to be a parabola that is a positive parabola. In other words, we're concave up. And we can have x-intercepts at 3, 0 from the parentheses and negative 2, 0. What we're going to do here is to talk about kind of where that stuff comes from because uh, it's not going to be enough that we talk about just doing the opposite. Now we're going to show kind of the solving process for that. We're going to start with ones that are similar to what we had in the previous page. And I note that but the instructions here are solved by factoring. Again, we're trying to find x-intercepts, also known as zeros or roots. And I'm going to look to see what I can divide both of those by. I can take an x out of both, and I can take a 3 out. So I'm going to divide both of those by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then I've got an x squared divided by x, leaving me with an x. For the other part, I've got 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4, and the x's are just 1, so that's fine. 
So here's the, the thing that's going to happen here. If I have two things that are multiplying to get an answer of 0, one of those two things must be 0. So the way we're going to deal with that is to take each part and set it equal to 0. So 3x equals 0. And then also, 1x minus 4 is equal to 0. Solving these, I'm going to divide by 3. We get x equals 0. I'm going to add 4. And we get x is equal to 4. So we have two answers for this. And again, I want you to think about this in terms of our graph. We said that these are going to be our x-intercepts at 0 and 4. So we'd have a problem that looks like this. For the one labeled 22, uh, I can do the same thing. We got 0 is equal to, and then I can take a 5x out of both of those. That would leave me with just an x and a plus 5. I'm going to take the same approach and take each part of this, because if this multiplies to get 0 as an answer, either 5x equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. You've got to have both equations. Solving the first one, dividing by 5, we get x is equal to 0. Minus 5 to both sides, we get x is equal to negative 5. For the next one, here we've got the same situation going on. I've got a 2 in common. So I can divide both of those by 2, and I can take an a out of both as well. Uh, that's going to leave me with 2 times 2 to get 4 and an A, and then 2 times 5 for the second part. I'm going to do the same thing, because this is still equal to 0. And we're going to have 2A is equal to 0. And then we're going to have 2A minus 5 is equal to 0. That gives us dividing by 2. A is equal to 0. And if I add 5 to both sides, we get 5 is equal to 2A dividing by 2 we end up with 5 over 2. For the last one, we have something that looks a little bit different. If you notice this and you say, hey, this one looks different to me uh, because this one appears to have nothing equal to 0, then you're right. We've got to set things equal to 0 first, and that's going to be something we always have to do for quadratics. And when I say set equal to 0, I mean get everything onto the same side. So I'm going to minus 9x from both sides. We cannot combine those. Those are not like terms. We've got 3x squared minus 9x, and 9x minus 9x is 0. Now we can factor this. So we're going to factor. I can take a 3 out of both and an x out of both. Dividing that, I'd get an x, and dividing minus 9 by 3, I get a minus 3. All right, same story. we got 3x equals 0, and we got x plus, uh, sorry, x minus 3 equals 0. That gives me an x equals 0 and an x equals 3. Moving on, we talked about uh, we have to have some ways to do factoring of more complicated stuff, and that's what we're looking at here. Uh, so I'm going to write down some steps for this. These are going to be consistent for all of these things. Uh, we're going to break this up into something that looks exactly the same as this, but different. And by that, I mean that we're going to have two pieces on the inside here so that we can consider these as two groups of two instead of one group of three. Because two groups of two, we're going to be able to factor. The trick is that deciding what those groups are going to be, and that's the hard part about this. To do this, we're going to talk about this in terms of A, B, and C being these numbers that we have here. And just to make this clear, a is the number in front of x squared, in this case 4, b is the number in front of the x, the coefficient, in this case 4, and c is the number by itself, in this case minus 3. So when we do this, the first step we're always going to do is to set up kind of a puzzle for us. We take our a number and our c number and we multiply them, in this case that's 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. We take our b number and we write it. So that's going to be minus 3. Sorry, 4. It might be nice if I actually looked at these things, huh? Um, so in looking at this, our goal is going to be to find numbers that multiply to a times c and also add up to 4. What I mean by that is I'm going to begin making a list of numbers that multiply to negative 12. So I might say, okay, 1 times negative 12. All right, 
that multiplies to negative 12, but that adds up to negative 11. Uh, so that one doesn't work. Then we're going to try 2 times negative 6. That gets me negative 4 as an answer. That's going to be really close, but I want positive 4. Uh, I also notice that when I do that, uh, we got the opposite sign of what we wanted. So if we switch that to negative 2 and positive 6, then when we add those up, we get positive 4 as our answer. So that's going to be what we end up breaking our middle turn up into. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, the minus 2 and plus 6, those are going to be my coefficients. So it's going to be minus 2x and plus 6x. I'd like you to notice that if you combine those, that gives you 4x back out. But our goal here is to restructure this to make it a little bit easier for us to work with. We're going to factor each piece separately. So I'm going to describe this as factoring the groups. And for my first group, I can see that both of these can be divided by 2 and x. So I'm going to put a 2x out front. And the stuff that's going to be left over, so 4x squared divided by 2x is 2x. And minus 2x divided by 2x is going to be minus 1. For my second set of things, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to say, okay, look at these two pieces. Both of them are divisible by 3. So I'm going to put a plus 3 out front. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to do those dividings. So 6x divided by 3 is going to be 2x. And minus 3 divided by 3 is going to be minus 1. One of the things that you might notice is that when we did this, the two things that end up in the parentheses are now exactly the same. That's what we want here. When we have that, that's going to let us factor a second time or undistribute a second time to put this, and I'm going to color code very carefully here uh, so that we see that the black and red 2x minus 1s are combining into 1, uh, which is kind of a weird thing. This is a distribution thing, so we're undistributing that. The other pieces, and I'm sorry that both of these have a 2x, that actually makes this problem more confusing, end up going in your other parentheses. So 2x and then plus 3. Those are my leftovers. At this point, we're fully factored, and the only thing that's left is if you're asked you should be solving if required. And that would be the same stuff we did in the previous slide where we had uh, setting this equal to 0, which it already is, and then writing two equations from this. Uh, because that's not the new thing here, I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, I want to move on to the next example of doing the same process. All right, so we're doing the same exact thing. And just as a reminder, we're going to be looking at A, B, and C. So in this case, our A is 4, our B is negative 5, and our C is 1. Okay, so first step, we're doing that A times C thing. In that case, we got 4, and B is going to be negative 5. One of the things that I notice here uh, is that I've got to add up to a negative number but I've got to multiply to a positive number. Uh, so it's probably a good idea for me to start with some negatives that multiply to 4. I know that negative 1 and negative 4 will give me a positive 4 as I multiply and as I'm trying to add up to negative 5. Those ones also happen to work. Uh, so I noticed that they had to be negative. The first ones that I tried, I always try 1 times whatever first uh, gave me the answer I'm looking for. That's what we're going to break up our term into. So we're going to be write this as 4g squared and then minus 1x minus 4x is equal to 0. Um, I often find it's really helpful to include the 1 in front of x's, especially in this part of the year uh, where we're doing with uh, a whole bunch of factoring stuff because that makes it a little bit easier to remind ourselves that even if you take an x out, a 1 is still going to be there. I also like that I used x instead of g, which is the variable for this problem. So let's switch those back to g's. 
All right, so the second part about this was that factor the groups. And again, I'm going to take a look at the first two separately and then look at the second two separately. The first two, I can take a G out. And if I do that, I'm left with 4G and a minus 1. See, that minus 1 was handy there. Uh, for the second two, I don't see anything that I can take out. Um, I do, however, know that this looks kind of similar to what I want. I want this to be 4G minus 1. And right now I've got minus 4G plus 1. One really good rule of thumb is if I have a minus here, I'm always going to take that out. And if there's nothing there that I can visibly take out, I'm going to put that as a minus 1. And think about this. So if we were to distribute this, we get minus 4G and a plus 1. So that would end up working for what we're trying to do here. Uh, when we end up doing this, we now have the situation where our parentheses are the same. That's going to come out front in our next problem, or our next line down, rather. And then our leftovers, the g and the minus 1, are going to go in there. And again, if you're asked to solve, which again, we're not asked to do here, uh, we're just practicing this factoring stuff, then you can go forward from there. Next up, we've got x squared minus 5x plus 6. A couple of things I want to talk about here. The first is that this is really 1x squared. So that means a is 1, b is negative 5, because that's what's in front of our x, and c is 6. So we've got a times c is going to be 6, and b, what we're adding up to, is going to be minus 5. So again, we're going to multiply to 6 and add up to negative 5. I know both of these have to be negative again. So negative 1 and 6, sorry, negative 1 and negative 6. That gets me positive 6, but if I add those, I get negative 7. Okay, it doesn't work. Negative 2 and negative 3. Well, if I add those up, I get negative 5. That one works. So I'm going to rewrite. We've got 1x squared. We've got plus 6 equals 0. Just keep that in black. And then in the middle, we've got a minus 2x and a minus 3x. And just to check, that means the same thing as 5x if I were to combine those. Once we do that, we're going to factor our groups. So we've got a 1x squared and a minus 2x. I can take an x out of both of those. And that leaves me with an x times, sorry, an x minus 2. For my second pair, I can take a 3 out, but I, we have a minus there again. I want to remind us that in the last problem, we talked about always taking a minus out if you could. That's a good strategy. And if I do minus 3 divided by minus 3, let me do the 1x. Cool, that's what we have there. 6 divided by minus 3 is going to be minus 2. That gives me what I need. Now I have the same thing in both parentheses. I'm going to use that to undistribute that out front. And then I've leftovers, I've got an x and a minus 3. So when we set that up, uh, again, if you want to continue solving, you can. But in this case, we're not going to. We're just going to practice factoring. All right, and here's one more. This is really similar to one of the ones that we did the first day of this in class. Uh, and I want to talk about two different things that are going on here. Uh, the first is that I can rewrite this because this doesn't look the same as what we had before. And if I were to rewrite this, I could rewrite this as x squared minus 49. And in the middle, what I'd like us to think about is that if I don't see something, I could write that as a plus 0x. The reason that I'm talking about this in this way is so that we can kind of see a pattern that's happening here. Uh, when I do this, again, we've got an a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals negative 49. So if I think about my a times c, a times c is going to be negative 49, and I'm trying to add up to 0. That sounds weird, but if we think about things that multiply to 49, well, that's like negative 1 times 49. Definitely doesn't add up to 0. 
Uh, two doesn't work, three doesn't work, four, five, six don't work. At seven, we get negative seven times seven. So this is a perfect square. The negative means we have to have a negative and a positive version. And when I try to add those up, I get zero as an answer. Um, so that's what we're going to break that up into is a minus 7x and a plus 7x. Then we've got our x squared and our minus 49 coming down. Okay, so let's do our factoring. If I take an x out, that leaves me with an x minus 7. For my next pair, if I take a plus 7 out, because both of those are divisible by 7, I'm left with an x minus 7. I've got an x minus 7 in both. That's the magic that we're looking for. That combines into one parentheses, leaving me with an x and a plus 7 for my other parentheses. What I'd like you to notice is that these are opposite pieces, and that when we multiply those together, it ends up causing those middle terms to cancel out. Sometimes we call this a difference of squares because one of the things that I notice here is that both x squared and 49 are perfect squares. If you notice that this is something that you see, you can jump straight to this factoring pattern and you don't have to go through these steps. If you'd rather go through those steps by putting in zero in for b, that's totally fine as well. All right, let's look at some quick factoring just to kind of make sense of what's going on here and see if we're on the same page. All right, I'm going to start with my a times c. That's going to be negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And my b is going to be negative 9. Things that multiply to negative 10, I'm going to start with 1 times negative 10. That happens to add up to 9, so that works. Sorry, it adds up to negative 9. So we get 5x squared plus 1x minus 10x minus 2 is equal to 0. All right, and we're just factoring. We're not actually solving, so we don't need the equal to 0. It's also not in the problem. Uh, I see a lot of students do that, so I just did the same thing. Cool. Uh, first one, I can take an x out. That leaves me with a 5x and a plus 1. And the second one, both of these are divisible by 2. Always want to take that negative out if I can just to see what happens. That leaves me with a positive 5x and a plus 1. We have the same parentheses. That's going to form our first thing, 5x plus 1. And then we've got an x and a minus 2. To check your answer, if you do that distribution out, we should get back to the same thing. Let's look at number 6. And we start the same way. A times C is going to be 24, because 2 times 12 is 24. B is going to be negative 11. I'm trying to find things that multiply to 24 and add up to negative 11. I know they both got to be negative, because we have to add to a negative number. So I'm going to start with 1 times negative 24, and that definitely does not add up to negative 11. Negative 2 times negative 12. I got negative 14 there, but not negative 11. Negative 3 times negative 8. That's our winner. So 2m squared minus 3m minus 8m plus 12. For the first two, I can take an m out, leaving me with 2m minus 3. And the second ones, I can take a 4 out. We take the negative part, so I get a 2m, and 12 divided by negative 4 is minus 3. I noticed the same thing in both parentheses. That means that we are on the right track, 2m minus 3. And then I've got leftovers of m minus 4. Again, if you mul multiply that out, you can check your answer. For number 7, I noticed that I have this weird situation that I'm missing a b term again. So I'm going to rewrite this as 25p squared plus 0p minus 81. Uh, this is going to be really, really gross in terms of numbers, so just bear with me here. Uh, we're going to do uh, the same exact thing, a times c. Here we've got 25 times 81, uh, which, to be honest, I don't really want to deal with. So I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit here and write this as 5 times 5 times 9 times 9, and it's going to be negative. For b, I've got to add up to 0. And what I'd like you to notice is that I have 
two of each of the same things in my a times c. So if I were to choose negative 5 times 9 and positive 5 times 9, that meets this. But that gives me the two things that I want because those add up to 0. So it's going to be negative 45 and positive 45. Okay, let's write this. So 25p squared plus, sorry, minus, so I keep the same order. It doesn't actually matter, but I wrote that, so I'll follow it. Uh, so minus 45p plus 45p minus 81. I notice that the first two, I can take a 5 and a p out. That leaves me with a 5p minus 9. The second pair, I can take a 9 out. That leaves me with a 5p and a minus 9. Those two are the same, so 5p minus 9. And then I've got a 5p and a plus 9 outside, so that goes in my other parentheses. I'd like you to notice that these are the same type of thing we saw on the previous page. We have the same terms, but a plus and a minus. So this is a difference of two squares also. And if you saw it that way, you could definitely factor it that way. We're doing the same thing here. We've got a times c equals negative 24, and we're trying to add up to negative 2. I'm going to use some strategy here. Because I end up with a negative when adding, the negative has to be the bigger number. So that means like 1 times negative 24. No, we're close. 2 times negative 12, that's negative 10. 3 times negative 8, uh, that's going to give me negative 5. 4 times negative 6, that gives me negative 2. That's our winner. So we've got 8h squared plus 4h minus 6h minus 3. When we pair those up for grouping, I can take a 4h out of my first ones, leave me with a 2h and a plus 1. I can take a minus 3 out of my next ones, leave me with a 2h and a plus 1. That's the thing that's in common. So 2h plus 1 gets taken out of both. And my leftovers are 4h and minus 3. At this point, you are done. Uh, if you want to check your answer, you can multiply those out and see what we get.